Bruce, welcome back to Investor Stream and thanks for your time. Now, last time we spoke, you were working as a strategic advisor for Creso Pharma, and with the recent activity at board level, you've now come on board as a non-executive director, as well as Will Lay as managing director. What attracted you to getting more hands-on with Creso Pharma? And attract is the key word, right? Like it had to be super attractive because I dislike being on boards. And you say, well, you're, you joined a board. No, what I really like is advising a company so they succeed. And I've been doing that for about a year. And now we're in the spot where we can super accelerate if we're decisive. And so what I wanted to do in joining the board is to bring together the ingredients we have and act aggressively so we implement them successfully. And I can see with the people we've brought in concurrent with my arrival and some of the key people who've been around, we're ready to do that. Thanks, Bruce. Now, Will, you're obviously no stranger to working with Bruce, given your previous involvement at Canopy Growth. Yeah, would it give us a bit more colour on your background and what brought you to this role at Creso Pharma? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us, Alex. Originally, I started my career as an investment banker, actually in Europe, working out of the UK uh, in, in the office of the Canadian bank over there covering mining and, and oil and gas. Moved back to Toronto to focus more on mergers and acquisitions with the group. And this was a bank that was very progressive as Canada started to unroll its cannabis platform um, in the late 2010s. Um, and so I was part of the team that helped launch the cannabis practice within this investment bank. We ended up working on a mandate where we sold the company to Canopy Growth, which was obviously chaired and CEO'd by Bruce at the time. After that transaction, uh, pretty quickly after it, I moved over to Canopy Growth in the M&A role within Canopy. I spent a couple of years there looking at cannabis transactions around the world, working very closely with Bruce on, on several of them. And we had a really interesting ride. Um, and then after two years, I took some time away from working at Canopy and decided to do some consulting work, work for various different companies while I was seeking out the right project to really take my next role. And that role ended up being with Cresso Pharma. So obviously joined as an executive vice president in the fall. Um, and over the, the three or four months that I've been here, you know, got to look under the hood, see all of the interesting and, and fascinating things that we're working on, all the opportunities that we have ahead of us. And so you know, it's kind of as Bruce said, uh, when he joined the company, there's a lot of ingredients here that we can use to really build and accelerate going forward. And I look forward to being part of that process. Thanks, Bill. Now, we're also joined by Sierra Sage Herb CEO, Jody Scott. Jody, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, for those of you who's new to SSH, can you give us an overview of your business? You bet. So, my mom and sister and I started this company, and my sister's an herbalist and a midwife, and I was pre med. And our goal was to change first aid. We wanted to demonstrate that plant-based products could perform better than your legacy product. So our secret sauce is our lipid infusion process. So we've been extracting from plants long before the farm bill, but it's chamomile, chickweed, yarrow. And so at our manufacturing facility, we have these big, beautiful vats of herbs where we infuse them. And that yields the highest amount of the medicinal properties, which is why we have such effective products. So we have our Green Goo brand, which is our evergreen first aid. We have our Good Goo, which is our CBD line. And then we have our Southern Butter, which is our sexual wellness brand. Thanks, Jody. Now, as you mentioned there, you obviously done an outstanding job in growing the family business into a certified B Corp that's generating significant revenue. In terms of your in-country operations, where do your products currently retail? And what is the overall consumer demand like? Sure. So we have about 90,000 points of distribution at this time. Um, we've been really focused on food, mass, and drug. We wanted to be your OTC first choice for your topical therapeutic. So we really didn't want to be put into a box that we were just a natural product. We wanted to prove that we could perform better than your legacy brands. So CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Kroger, Albertson, Safeway, you know, we'll have another 20,000 new points of distribution in Q1. And we've only really started recruiting on our sales side. So we've recruited folks from Charlotte's Web, Canopy, and we're really just at the tip of the iceberg from a sales perspective in brick and mortar. Then to that, we only started on our direct-to-consumer model maybe 18 months ago. Since then, we've acquired about 150,000 new customers. We have about a quarter of a customer acquisition cost relative to the industry standard, our lifetime value is about 8x. So with this Cresto partnership, I'm really thrilled. I mean, there's a number of reasons that I'm thrilled in terms of the IP that we share, our ability to push them through Cresto IP through our distribution channels. But in addition to our direct-to-consumers, really just a sleeping giant that's just began. 
Thanks, Jody. So back to you, Will, if I can. The acquisition of Sierra Sage Herbs and the Green Goo brand represents a significant leap into the North American market. What attracted you to this transaction from Creso Pharma's point of view? Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about uh, the US CBD market, obviously it's a large and growing market and it remains pretty fragmented to this day. So you've seen some market share leadership develop, but not to the extent that you've seen further along the, the industry life cycle curve in other industries. And so when you think about Sierra Sage, there are really several factors that brought us into this partnership. First of all, is that established revenue base that's been discussed along with those relationships with the big box retailers and that really strong direct-to-consumer platform that can really be an acceleration with some extra marketing spend and continued optimization of the platform. We really like the existing brands that Sierra Sage has, including a CBD brand and, of course, the marketing and branding expertise that the company brings to the table. And at Cresso Pharma, we believe that in Switzerland, we've created some of the best products in the world, some of the best intellectual property in the world for CBD products. And we think Green Goo is an excellent opportunity to plug and play that intellectual property with an established brand and aggressively pursue growth within a new and growing market. And they also have a really fantastic relationship with this manufacturer, which is going to significantly lower minimum order quantities, turnaround times, et cetera. We think the manufacturing relationship has the ability to provide a lot of synergies. And as well, when you think about some of the other lines that Cresso Pharma has, for example, Impactive, our sports CBD brand, these relationships with big box retailers, that better manufacturing platform, all of these are going to help with the launch of products like this. And finally, when you think about Green U as having some non-CBD products as well, over the last five years, Cresso Pharma has developed a large network of global commercial partners, some of which have had challenges distributing the Cresso product line because of CBD and regulations that change very quickly around the world. We can use this acquisition as an opportunity to take some of the non-CBD products that Sierra Sage has and plug them into those existing commercial relationships. So really, no matter what way you look at this transaction from, there are synergies to be had in every factor. Thanks, Bill. Now, Bruce, if I can turn to you here, it appears that the US CBD landscape is fairly fractured and there's now a growing acceptance for psychedelics in North America. With Crozo Pharma now having exposure across both these sectors, in terms of expansion into these markets, in your view, where do you see the company fitting into the landscape moving forward? Kind of fractured for a reason. Like part of the reason Jody's company has been successful is they figured out how to make products you want to buy again. And again and again. And so I've had access to these products. Jody, what has it got to be more than a year that, um, you know, we first started interacting because uh, some of the most skilled and knowledgeable product people in the crossover between sort of, I'll call it pharma and beauty that had worked with me went to join Jody. And so I had the access to these products. They're amazing. Not all the products in the CB in that fractured part of America are good. And so where I think this can go is when you have a great product and you're adding more technology to it, more markets to it, and more budget to it, it expands rapidly. So I just think we're building from a better base than most of the people who said, we've got CBD, now what should we do with it? These folks thought about how do we make great products and CBD became an ingredient in them. Thanks, Bruce. And finally, Will, obviously canopy growth expanded rapidly as a result of high level M&A activity, of which you were a key, key component. Does the company expect to grow through M&A across 2022? Yeah, so obviously Bruce and I are no strangers to M&A transactions and growth through M&A. So I think it's safe to say that over 2022 and across 2023, we will look for strategic acquisitions, both in North America, but also around the world. As we've talked about already in this interview, um, the US CBD landscape is, is quite fragmented and there's an opportunity there to start building some scale, some market share, some economies of scale. And although I think we have really fantastic IP as it relates to CBD products, we don't necessarily have that in every single product category type. So there's obviously opportunities out there to expand our product offering through strategic and targeted acquisition. Every single product category type. So there's obviously opportunities out there to expand our product offering through strategic and targeted acquisition. Fantastic. Bruce, Jody, Will, really appreciate you all joining me today. Uh, all the best with the, with the transaction and uh, we look forward to chatting soon. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thanks very much.